favorite days of the week? Probably is my favorite day of the week. I know, crazy as that may be, uh, pretty much almost everyone in our family loves Monday. It's a day of new beginnings. Start start the week off right um, after a nice, relaxing weekend, and then just getting back into things. And I'm real excited to uh, be able to share with you. I wanted to come straight from our garden today, but chance of rain, and I don't want to take that opportunity to get outside and um, get ruined my computer and everything. So I was in the garden about 20 minutes ago, and I'll share with you that this is what I picked. I thought I needed a little bit more basil. So this is the basil I chose uh, from the garden today. And I have actually chopped some, only because the chopper makes a lot of noise. And I just want to share with you, before we get started actually, what is the best way to store your basil that you choose from the garden? Is it an airtight container in the refrigerator? No. Is it uncovered on the counter and water? No. It doesn't really behave like a tree. And what basil really loves is something very simple. And I actually have a cup right here. This is what basil loves. Basil loves a little bit of water. Should have got a bigger cup here. Maybe just grab another um, a larger container here. We'll put a little bit more water in here. You don't want to drown the basil, so um, fill it about halfway up. Just put it in there just like you would flowers. But the difference of keeping your basil like you would flowers and keeping your basil is one major trick. The basil always wants to think it's in a greenhouse. So, and I did this last week, the basil that we're making this with today, I pulled from the garden a week ago today, um, right after live at five, and I brought it in and I tried this concept and it really does work. So you just wanna cover your basil. And I kept checking it during the week. I only changed the water once and that was yesterday because it really didn't need the water to be changed. And you can just leave it like that. Now, cosmetically, we know that it doesn't look beautiful, but the taste is so worth it. So I'm just gonna take this basil and lean it back up over here. And basil bruises so quickly, there's nothing that you can do to keep from bruising your basil. And when it bruises, it gets darker. So you want to remember that. But one thing you can do is use some flat leaf Italian parsley in your pesto, which we do use a half a cup of that as well as your basil, and then that will keep your, your, um, your basil a little bit more green. So to get started, I'm just going to share with you some different things that I do um, with garden vegetables. I'm so excited. I cannot wait ever for this time of year. The only problem that we have actually with our garden, my husband, Tony, is an overzealous gardener. So he doesn't plant 12 potato, I mean tomato plants. <laughs> he plants like 40 or 50. So zucchini, all the vegetables that we have, they're literally taking over the garden. They're competing with the weeds. So I think the more, the less room you have in the, your garden when you plant, um, the more problems that you have because you can, you can have slugs, you can have insects, you can have a lot of things. And I did notice with our basil this year, um, something is eating the leaves, but I have enough basil. We planted enough of it that I just choose what I like. And actually when you do, when you make pesto, if there's a little hole in one of the leaves, no one will ever know as long as it's not, you know, browning or something or dried out or anything like that. But we keep our, our garden very well guarded. So I have taken three to four cups of basil and I've chopped it in here. Now you'll notice, um, I actually used our eco chop, which I'm going to show you. There, you can see a little sense. I also chopped the parsley. But when we emulsify this back into um, either your food processor or uh, EcoChop, you'll see that it will, it will also um, still do a little bit more chopping. With the liquid, it allows it um, just more movement and free flowing in the EcoChop. So right now I have in here about a cup of basil. Of course, you would be doing this a couple different times. And I'm gonna put the flat leaf parsley right on top just to give you an idea. And I wanna make sure I have enough parsley that we really keep the green color. And that our basil doesn't, our pesto doesn't turn all brown. Okay, that should be good. I'm just gonna 
like this, you can see how nice and green that is. But once you chop it and it sets, it gets a little bit, gets a little bit darker. Just gonna get the spatula. I don't want to waste any of this. You can smell the aroma of this basil. It smells like licorice, and that's normal if your basil smells like licorice. A lot of times you don't discover that smell until you have a lot of basil or really fresh basil. There's no sense in eating basil if it has no, no um, smell. So you wanna make sure that even when you're buying basil, it could look nice, but the, it may have been sitting around a while and you will lose the smell. If you lose the smell, you lose the taste. So we've got this mixed up right here. We see one straggler here. I'm just gonna pull the leaves off of that. And then I'm going to start adding the other ingredients. I have one half of a teaspoon of minced garlic and put that in. We have one half cup of Parmesan and you can do a shredded, I did a shredded Parmesan um, because I, I, didn't, I didn't want it to compete with the texture of the basil, but you can do, you can even do an Asiago or whatever you, whatever you like. I mean, it's entirely up to you. I like this because it blends really well together. The other thing I'm going to do is take a half of a lemon and I, I did a lot. I did probably even a little bit more basil than what the recipe calls for. I might just put two lemons in, two halves, one full lemon. Citrus press is absolutely amazing. No seeds. I love that. I love that part. Then I'm just going to mix this up a little bit, make sure everything is blended together. Um, then I'm going to take three-fourths of a cup of oil. It's a one-cup measure, but I know how much three-fourths is. So remember that when you're doing pasta, you definitely want to make sure an olive oil is not, you're not going to put all of this on one, one serving. So you don't need to, you know, really worry about that. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take the, um, the chop, and I'm just going to put just a speck of oil in here. I am using uh, extra virgin olive oil, however, you could also use um, any of the garlic oil, herbs de Provence, any of the oils that you like. The Tuscan oil would be fabulous in this. Flavored oils are great because if you're in a rush, you don't have to worry about, you know, mincing your own garlic or anything like that. Let me show you what happens when we do this. And that's about 10 pools. And you can see the difference here. It's all emulsified together, really beautiful. Quite honestly, this is totally ready for the pasta. I'm gonna just grab my spatula again. I've already got the pasta made, so you don't need to wait for that. And if you wanted your basil more fine, your pesto, you can also just continue doing those pulls. Um, but this seems, I really like to put a little bit of oil in the eco chop when you do this just so it gives it a really good free flowing movement regardless of how much you put in there because with the oil everything moves around much better than if it were just uh, the dry ingredients and the oil that we put in the in the in the pesto already cool so you can see here's our pesto now what do you do with it well i have right here pasta that I made about a half hour ago. So my husband had this last week for dinner. He's gonna have it again tonight. <laughs> he, he loves pasta actually. And the cool thing is, I don't need to run this under water to lose more flavor because there's enough oil in this pesto that I don't, I don't really need to do that. So we have one serving here. And then we have one for Tony for lunch tomorrow. I'm going to take this. I like to take two forks. And then I'm just going to put some of this right on top here. 
and then I'm going to take my fork I'm going to try and move it around a little bit to get that oil into the pasta mix it up a little bit you can always add more cheese I like to serve cheese with the pasta in case somebody wants to eat that at the same time this is such a great tasting I mean it's really um, underspoken for <laughs> I think that's what I could say it's it's not spoken well enough of because the, the flavor is fabulous because it's so fresh, it's from the garden, you just mix this up here. And then if you want it a little bit tangier, you can add more lemon. Of course, the one thing I'm going to do, instead of adding the salt to the basil, I'm going to add it straight onto the pasta. And then I'm gonna mix it up just for one more twirl. So for the salt, I'm using uh, always a chunkier salt is better uh, for pesto, just because that's what you expect. So I'm going to take just a little bit of this and I'm going to chunk your salt. You can use a grinder, but also smashing it together in your hands, in the palm of your hand like this. Look at that. It's nice. Now I can just sprinkle this on top. It's not very much salt. It's just a good amount. And we have dinner all set. And then You can shred pine nuts or roast pine nuts and put that on top, but I didn't have any pine nuts and I forgot to get them actually. Just going to put one little scoop of pesto on top here. And it's as simple as that. Dinner's ready. Can you believe that? How long does it take? Like three or four minutes? It, the longest time that it takes to make this is to boil your pasta because everything else you can do in no time at all. Just um, put everything together in a processor, in, in a chopper, whatever you like, but there you go. Voila, dinner's ready, bon appetit, right? So, I didn't think that I could correctly talk about vegetables without sharing with you something that I always do. And I do it in the wintertime with store-bought vegetables and I do it in the summertime with vegetables that I get from the garden. Especially if I get vegetables from the garden that, eh, you know, maybe they're bruised or uh, a little brown on one side or something, not looking absolutely perfect. Uh, but these all look pretty good. We've got zucchini, uh, yellow and green. We've got uh, Roma tomatoes, pepper, started out green, it's orange, and green peppers. So when I look at this array of vegetables, I think ratatouille, I think, what am I gonna do with it? Well, I don't wanna follow a recipe. And you don't always have to follow a recipe because you can create your own. So I'm going to take the vegetables and I'm going to do something very, very simple. Super easy, super fast, uh, literally takes no time at all. So I'm going to chop the vegetables very easily. I'll move this stuff out of my way here. So I like to chop them in chunks. I'm going to take the zucchini and I'm going to cut down both sides of the zucchini like this. Do you know that, let's say for instance, if I just came from work and I just wanna do something really fast, this is something you would find me doing on a Sunday because I wanna have something ready that I can throw together with something else during the week. So I like to cut these vegetables and then I'm gonna take my pot I'm going to put a little bit of oil in it. It's about a half a teaspoon or something. Turn my pot on. And then I'm going to create my vegetable medley. It's going to be really good. Everything's going to cook down and taste so good together. You can serve it over pasta. You can serve it over rice. You can do whatever you like with it. I'm going to take all of these vegetables far as I'm washed. Pull the seeds out. I love to pull the seeds just from inside here. If you pull them back, you don't waste any of the pepper. Just remember that. You don't have to cut around it or anything. Just use your hands. Pull that back and it's done in no time at all. Another thing, these vegetables are not small. I'm just cutting them in strips and then I'm cutting them in half. I do the same thing, pull it back, perfect can take out these veins. Then 
then I'm going to take the tomatoes and I'm going to do the same thing. Just leave them in quarters, these tomatoes in quarters. It's amazing how well everything marries together when you do this. And then this is what I call like a healthy stew. This is a healthy vegetable stew. Anyone that's ever worked with me in my office knows that I love to make this. <laughs> and I get so excited when I make it and everybody's like, oh. I'm like, what, what do I mean? Well, it's something that I love. I love I love to eat a lot of vegetables. So for me, it's great. We do fry peppers a lot in our house, but this is good too. You can also serve it with chicken. You can uh, do uh, grilled chicken. And then you can serve it right on top of it, and then whatever else you serve it with, you can put it with potatoes. You could use it in soups. I have uh, many times taken the vegetables like this and already had them ready like that, and then put them into a soup or put them into a pasta sauce, anything like that. Very, very simple. I never like the seeds in my, my food. I usually always use cabbage. This is the first cabbage from the garden. Yay. So I'm going to do the same thing with the cabbage. Just throw everything in. This is all one pot. This is not soup. You could make it into soup. If you didn't have fresh tomatoes, you could use um, any kind of canned tomatoes or stewed tomatoes. It's good too. Do know that the zucchini and the cabbage are going to liquefy along with the tomatoes, so you don't need to worry about adding liquid. Sometimes you could put chicken broth or something if you want to in there, just to make it a little bit healthier. You could use also bone marrow broth, it's really good, it's so good for you as well. But I just like to have this great array of all these wonderful chicken, I mean uh, garden vegetables, not chicken, and put them all together. I'm going to make sure I put all the tomatoes in. My husband may be asking me tonight what I did with all the tomatoes. <laughs> I saved a couple, so <laughs> hopefully we might. So this is really, really simple. And the next thing I'm going to do is something that uh, I've done for years that is really great. I created this concept of a Spice for Life kit at one time. And the Spice for Life kit was filled with five spices that they say, and everywhere you read, scientists say that they're some of the five best spices for you. So I thought it would be cool to make a kit with some of those spices. And I did that, and um, I'm going to tell you about those spices, the ones I'm going to actually use in this. Okay, we're all set with this. I'm going to leave that big one there. Okay, so we have Spice for Life here. What I'm going to use, number one, I'm going to use ginger. So for the ginger, this is a quarter of a teaspoon. So I'm going to use about a full teaspoon of this. So I'm going to make sure we have a lot of ginger. Nothing wrong with ginger. It tastes great and it's good for you. It's, it's awesome. The second one is turmeric. Now, when you uh, when you use turmeric, it's important to remember turmeric it has so many great properties. If you make tea, it's a great thing to put in your tea. It's a great thing to cook with. Whatever you're making, just to add a little bit of that flavor. If your family hasn't eaten, haven't tasted turmeric before, don't overdo it. So. I did that one time to my daughter Amanda, and if she's watching, she'll tell you she was not impressed. So like, what'd you do to this right? I'm just going to put in um, a dash. I'm going to put two dashes of this, which is an eighth of a teaspoon. But if you like turmeric, you can put in even more. And what happens is the vegetables, as they cook down with that spice in them, they just all the ingredients marry together and just becomes a really great pot of um, really good food. So I'm going to just stir this up so we can get all the vegetables. You can see some of this is already liquefying here, which is really great. You can 
could serve this with rice, pasta, meat. You could serve it with beef. You could serve it with chicken. You could serve it under something, over something. I mean, it's really, really a great, great thing to make. So what I'm going to do is, I don't know where my lid is. I had it out. I set it down somewhere. But I'm going to just, um, I'm going to turn this down so you don't have to listen to it sizzle. But generally, I will cook this for about an hour or so. Um, depending on what what flavor you want it to have, I'm going to put a little bit of salt in there. Okay, that's good. Um, really, really nice. And it's just, I mean, it's something, it's not anything exquisite. It's just a pot of vegetables, basically. And, you could put green beans in there. Any of the vegetables you have in the garden, we could even put some of the basil in there. It's going to taste really, really good as well. So um, really important. There are other things that you can do, whether you want to make a quick dinner a cold or you want to make a hot dinner. Do know that the pesto pasta, you could also grill chicken, chill that, and then serve it with cold chicken on top. Um, mix that up real well, then serve it with cold chicken on top, and then you will have... Um, for a lunch, for a brunch, for uh, a picnic, or anything like that. It can be served hot or cold. You know, pasta salad is so good when it's cold. I would add, if I did that, I'd add just a little smidgen of our traditional balsamic alongside uh, with that, so it would be really good. The next thing I want to show you, just how you can actually take the pasta and do some other things with it, too. So I have these buffalo mozzarella balls. Anyone know why they're called buffalo mozzarella? Well, buffalo mozzarella is made from the milk of buffaloes, and that's that's why they are called buffalo. So I'm going to take three of these. They're very, very creamy and could fall apart easily. The other thing you could do, uh, heating up that pasta, you could toss it, fry it in the pan, throw this mozzarella in, and that would be really good too. I don't think you need to do that though, because it's going to be tasty just like that. So I'm going to go back to our pesto, stir this up a little bit, and I'm going to put about one spoon of the pesto in here, and then I'm going to mix this up. So now we have buffalo mozzarella with pesto, and you can do this pretty much with any type of cheese. You could smother the outside of goat cheese with it and then cut it. You'll have that beautiful goat cheese taste. And then that fresh, fresh uh, pesto, basil pesto is really awesome. So you would take this and let's say that you were, if I were going to put this on the pasta, which I can try that. I mean, Tony will try it because I'm not going to eat the pasta has gluten in it. But I would just take it like this. And you see, we have even a more interesting dinner all at the same time, right? Cool. So very, very simple. There's so many different variations that you can do. Um, the other thing that you can do is actually serve the pesto as the superstar. So when you put it in pasta, the pasta, I mean, pasta is pasta. You know, pasta is a superstar because it's a pasta dish. However, it's what you put with the pasta that becomes a real superstar. If you did uh, grilled shrimp and then you did lemon and the pesto, it's fabulous, fabulous. There are so many different things you can do to do a uh, fresh mozzarella with tomatoes and uh, like a tart and then do the pesto on top of that or little dapples of that around it. So it's just really, really exciting, all the different things that you can do. And to just know that just you know, plant, planting some basil, basil grows really fast and it continues to grow and grow and grow. So there's so much basil in my garden right now. I'm like, I better start making this into ice cubes and freezing it so I have it anytime I want all year long. So that is something else that you want to think about too. What can you freeze? What can you keep? What can you refrigerate and use for several different recipes as the week goes by? I raised four children. So when I was working, I always liked to do like once a week cooking on the weekend. I still do that a lot because I love to cook and I have more time on the weekend. And just take a pot like this and divide it into twos or threes and put two in the freezer and keep one out. So you can always go back so you're not scrambling and thinking, oh, we have to eat frozen fake food or we have to get restaurant food. You don't have to do that. You can, 
you can find so many different opportunities as long as you do one thing, and that's prepare ahead of time. Every night when you make dinner, think about what you could use for later. So it's uh, make now, eat later, make now, eat now, and eat later. It makes a lot of sense. And freezing your food, um, many of the foods that you find in your grocer have been previously frozen. You just may not realize that. So don't feel like freezing food. And you, there are great charts online of what you can freeze, how long you can freeze food for. If you have a busy family, you're going to use the fresh ingredients that you freeze very quickly. As a matter of fact, yesterday I made the chocolate zucchini cake because I just wanted to make that. It was so good. Uh, we tried it and then I put it in the freezer. We'll go up north this weekend to our lake house and we'll grab those on the way. By the time I get there, it's two and a half hours or two hours and 45 minutes from here. By the time we arrive, I'll just put it in the refrigerator and for the next morning for breakfast, it will already be ready. So just thinking ahead just a little bit, it's amazing how many things you can have. And a lot of people say, oh, my family doesn't eat leftovers. Yes, they will eat leftovers. You don't need to tell them that it's leftover because the taste is still there if you care for your food properly. And I think that's one of the most important things. Caring for your family and caring for your food goes hand in hand together because when you care about the food that you prepare. Why would I prepare this? I always make enough that I have for um, Tony to take food for lunch the following day, always. And we, we generally could eat probably another time after that. Um, trying, you know, I raised a big family. I come from a big family of eight children. So you could understand that I always make too much food. I always make too much food, whether it's a sweet or it's a savory. I always make too much food, but I am learning now because we're empty nesters, learning how to control that a little bit and not waste time just making dinner for two. Because dinner for two, when I think of making dinner for two, I'm like, oh, well, what if Tony wants more? What if he's more hungry? Uh, always, uh, maybe he'll come back for second helpings. And, you know, generally we eat out of you know, a plate this size, so we're not eating tons and tons of food every single day. But I stop at the sweets. I <laughs> what I want. Um, bad. I know I'm bad. So anyway, I just uh, hope that you take some of these tips and really use them. And please do share. If you haven't liked our Bomb Cook play page, please go to Bomb Cook where you're seeing this and like our page at the top. Go to Instagram and um, join in our Instagram community. We do a lot of contests on there and just a lot of different things just to bring this community of cooks together and know that we do have a business opportunity for people across the U.S. that maybe want to cook and share, uh, just like I do here from the kitchen. Um, I do this certainly to help our consultants get new ideas, but just also just to share my love of cooking. I absolutely love to cook and we are, we are bomb cooks, so we're full of a lot of good cooks and people who love to cook and cook together in the kitchen. Thank you everyone for joining in. I'll get to your questions as soon uh, as I get done with this. So have a great evening. I hope you're cooking along and I hope you find something great that you found or found new tips for something new to do in your kitchen. So um, join us uh, next week on Live at Five at bombcook.com. Uh, at Facebook, uh, Bomb Cook, and like us on the Bomb Cook page. And if you want to reach out and look at our products and see all the different things that we have to offer, including food, we have some new food lines coming from France not very long from now, um, along with our vinegars, our oils, our excellent pizza dough. There's a lot of things that we have that just to help you become a better cook in the kitchen without all the stress and all the fuss. So thanks so much, everyone. Have a great Monday. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.